Welcome back to Jibri's Gibberish, and today I'm going to be telling you about how I mounted my XTM air compressor from BCF, which is very similar to all of the other Chinese ones that I've seen, the same one that Super Cheap sells, uh, looks very similar to the King's compressor. Anyway, I mounted it in the back of the Land Cruiser, and I'm going to tell you why I went with this particular compressor and how I did it, and then I'm going to tell you about a little project that I've got coming up that I'll be doing a video on shortly, where I'm going to be making a DIY in deflate. Alrighty, so let's just start off with the first part, and that is why did I go with the XTM air compressor rather than something like an ARB air compressor? Well, it's really simple. I can't afford an ARB air compressor. Well, I could probably get the single one, but I definitely can't afford the dual one. And I actually bought this as a temporary air compressor well, nearly three years ago, just to get me out of trouble after I bought the Land Cruiser. The old Patrol had an endless air system in it, which was, well, it was okay. Super, super fast, but just not super reliable. But once I got the Land Cruiser, I had no air compressor. So I had to come up with a solution so that I could head down the beach. And the XTM, I saw it on special, I think it was 110 or 100 twenty dollars and i bought it just because it was cheap turns out it's been one of the best air compressors i've ever had and i've had quite a few different branded ones it's been well touch wood super reliable and it's really really fast it's actually pretty quick i'm sure the arb dual compressor would be a little bit faster but at well probably seven times the price i could buy one of these things every year and still be in front in seven years time but because it was a cheap compressor and it was only a temporary thing i carried it around the bag for years and just recently i decided bugger it i'm actually going to fit it into the land cruiser but of course i've already got the drawers installed so putting it in the cavity down the side where the arb ones go would be nigh on impossible and also i don't think it would fit in there anyway it is quite large so i decided to use some of the wasted space that i've got in one of the wings on the side of the drawer system and put it in there that's where i used to store it anyway but it was a pain getting it in and out now the other problem that i had was that the fuel tank is directly underneath where i wanted the air compressor to go meaning drilling holes in the floor and putting bolts through would be potentially a little bit problematic unless I drop a tank, which I'm not going to do. The other thing is I didn't really want to drill holes in the floor of the Land Cruiser. I didn't mind drilling holes in the side of the drawers though, and that's exactly what I've done. So I've headed down to Bunnings and I've picked up some brackets. I've got some galvanized brackets so I didn't have to paint them. And these were, I think, from the patio section or maybe the shopping section, I can't remember. But anyway, here is the exact barcode for them. And the reason why you need to know this is because the holes actually line up perfectly. I didn't have to drill a hole at all. They line up with the holes for the feet on the air compressor. All I had to do was just trim the end off at the width of the air compressor on one side and it just went straight in. So I'm just using the gravity of the weight of the air compressor to hold it down and I've just bolted it through into the draw system on the side. So it's basically being held by the side and that's not necessarily a big problem. It's not really going to go anywhere and even if it did, well, I don't really care. It'll just bounce around inside where it used to be stored anyway. So I've hooked the whole thing up through a 150 amp relay that I got from JCAR and I've plugged it into my existing fuse box, which don't look too closely. <laughs> you know, I, when I first put this fuse box in, there was only two things hooked up to it. And I thought, man, this is overkill. I don't know why I've gone to the expense of putting this here. And now it's got a whole bunch of unlabeled noodle wiring just all over the place but you know whatever so what i did was i hooked up the air compressor to two 25 amp fuses i should have put two 30s in because it's got a 60 amp rating uh, i just didn't have any 30 amps left so i'll worry about that when it blows and i'm in the bush and stuck and don't have my 30 amp fuses because i never bought any more so i've put two 25 amp fuses on there and run it straight to the relay and then the relay is switched via a pressure sensor it's a 90 on 120 off pressure switch i got off ebay and that's just run through a t-piece that runs through to the switch at the back it's a missile style switch and the reason that i went for the missile style switch was so that it doesn't accidentally get knocked and turned on while i'm driving along or somebody flicks it not knowing what it is at the back and then all of a sudden it makes a big noise and i just thought it was a nice touch to just make it so that it doesn't accidentally come on i've then run a normal air compressor hose which is a mistake i know i've done this before it doesn't like heat and it generally splits in fact i only had some cheap air compressor hose lying around so so i plumbed the whole thing up with that air compressor hose at first and of course with the first trial it blew out on the end where it was connected to the air compressor because it just got too hot 
I've now changed it over to fuel injection line, 3 8 inch or 10 mil fuel injection line. This stuff's rated to 16 bar, and I've used it successfully on air compressor systems in cars before, especially when the exhaust temperature has made the airline pop, which may still happen on this setup that I've got here, but I do have an extra section there if that happens. I have tried to tuck it away, but we'll see how that goes. I'm not convinced that the fuel injection line is going to be able to handle the heat on the output of the air compressor long term. I did use braided hose on my endless air systems, and I might end up having to do that on this one anyway. But the thing is, if it does blow on a mount bush, it doesn't really matter because I can just take the Nito fitting off and plug the airline that came with the air compressor directly on and just do it that way if I have to. So the airline runs down through the passenger side rear seat through the grommet in the floor and it's tucked up along underneath the car and it comes out here at the back of the Land Cruiser in the bumper right next to my 240 volt inlet for the fridge. Now this is a really neat trick. I've used this on all of my air fittings on all of my cars in the past. This is uh, quite a bit smaller because I've actually gone with a male Neato fitting on this install and I'll explain why in a minute. But these are stool feet that you can buy from Bunnings. They come in all different sizes. I've used them for all sorts of things in the past, even on my TV antenna and uh, 4G antenna on the caravan on the back of the bolts so that it doesn't bounce into the roof on corrugations. They're just super handy. They come in all different sizes. They're really cheap. And then I just put a little bit of black chain screwed in with a black screw and then attach that to one of the screws on the 240 volt inlet mount. And that means that when I pop off the cover, it just dangles there and I don't lose it. So why did I go with a male Neato fitting instead of a female Neato fitting or a Ryko fitting or any of the other types of air fittings that are out there? Well, I've always used Ryko's in the past on cars because you can put one of those feet, those chair leg feet straight over the whole female fitting and it covers it up pretty well. But it doesn't entirely stop them getting crap in there. When it's sitting at the back of the car and you're going through mud and dust and whatever else, they do just get crap in them. And so by putting the male fitting on there, I can just turn the air compressor on and blow out any crap that's in there and it's got no moving parts. So nothing's going to seize up or get dust in it or dirt in it or anything like that. The other thing is that the air hose that came with this compressor had a female Neato fitting on it and it just meant that I could use the existing hose that came with the compressor. Now the reason I put the pressure switch on was not because I need it for this setup because it's got a male Neato fitting on the output there. It's not actually going to pressurize but what I am planning to do is with my new air inflation system that I'm going to be doing a video on shortly that's going to have a tap that I can turn on and off while I'm inflating to get an accurate pressure reading and that way the air compressor will turn itself on and off without me having to go and flick the switch because if I'm at the front of the car I don't want to have to come to the back to turn the switch off in order to be able to read the pressure of the tire when it's inflating. Because when you're inflating the tires, if you're reading the pressure as the compressor is running, that's a false reading because you've got the pressure coming out of the air compressor giving you a higher reading than what you've actually got in the tire. So you really do need to turn the air compressor off in order to get a real reading. And so having a ball tap setting on the air inflator will allow me to do that without having to keep going backwards and forwards and all over the place. So what you need if you want to do a setup like this is you get the pressure switch off eBay. They're about $17, I think. Need a few different air fittings and some air hoses, uh, just 3 8 inch barb fittings. The T-piece I've got, it's got quarter inch BSP thread on it. And then I've just used 3 8 inch to quarter inch BSP barbs. So that works all nice and simple. Obviously put a little bit of thread tape on anything that you're screwing in with your air fittings. The 150 amp relay, the switch, and a little bit of wiring oh and a couple of fuses of course it's pretty straightforward and it's going to make life so much easier there's a lot of times where i haven't let my tires down on gravel roads because it's only a short distance and i can't be bothered with all the hassle getting the air compressor out and trying to put it away when it's hot well now i don't have to worry about that i can just turn it on grab the inflator hose out of the back drawer system and away we go when i'm finished turn it off put the hose away and drive off don't have to wait for anything to cool down don't have to pack anything away much much easier so there you go you can even fit a really cheap air compressor into your car and they're actually pretty good it's pretty easy to do if you like the video please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel i'll see you guys in the next one